recurring tasks, inbox views, subtasks, Kanban views, project views. I'm so, so tired. Hey, welcome to the Thomas Frank Explains video. So today we are tackling what is for many people the white whale when it comes to Notion, and that is task management. It's been right on the homepage ever since Notion launched, it replaces Asana, replaces Trello, but for a lot of people, they have found it kind of difficult to set Notion up in a way that actually lets them manage their tasks and ditch these other apps. So today I'm gonna to show you exactly how to do that using a brand new template that I just launched called Ultimate Tasks. And you can find that over at thomasjfrank.com slash templates or the link to the exact template is gonna be down in the description below. You can just click it and duplicate it and even follow along with it while you watch this video. But I'm gonna use this template to essentially teach you how you can manage your tasks, both singular tasks, recurring tasks, subtasks, big projects, all kinds of different tasks work inside of this template. So let's just dive right into it and show you what I got going on. So this is the sort of main dashboard here for ultimate tasks. And right away, you're gonna see links to many of the views that you would often see in another task management app, such as your inbox, your today view, your next seven days view. I've also got a priority view here, which allows you to see things in a Kanban view and sort them by priority. And there's this all tasks link right here, which is the master database that runs the entire system. It is essentially the brain here. Every single task ends up here, but this is probably not the view you're gonna wanna use because it's sort of just a dumping ground for everything. So let's go back to the dashboard. In addition to those links, we've also got an area for projects. And this was really important to me. I wanted a place where I could manage my daily tasks, my personal tasks, but also manage big projects in sort of a Kanban view where I could have all kinds of things going on at once. In fact, I just recently redesigned my personal website, which was a pretty big project. And I used this template to organize the entire thing. And lastly, in the dashboard, we have something called daily tasks. If you watched any of my old videos about my productivity systems, you know that I like to plan out my day on a piece of scrap paper or on a whiteboard. And essentially this replicates that right inside of Notion. And this daily tasks board is actually within pretty much every view that you're gonna see, except for the project view. So if I go to inbox here, this is sort of you know the inbox view that you expect in Todoist or Microsoft Todo or anything else where you can just dump tasks before they're sorted. And to the side, just as with the today view and the next seven days view, we have this daily tasks area. So if you want, you could create a scratch pad where you essentially plan out your day or just dump a few tasks that you know are gonna get done really soon and that don't need to be put into the actual overall system. But that's probably the simplest part of the system. So let's get into some of the actual views. So here we have the inbox and you're gonna see a few different interesting columns on this table here. First, we have a checkbox called inbox. Any task here in the inbox that has this box checked is going to remain in the inbox until you uncheck it. So if I go ahead and uncheck a task right here, it's going to go away as long as it also has a due date. Essentially, the logic here is to allow you you to add new tasks to your inbox, then add their due date, to add their project, to add their priority, whatever it is you wanna do, but keep them in the inbox while you're doing that until you wanna get them out of the inbox. So let's just create a sample task right here called a uh, shoot ultimate tasks video which I'm doing right now. So I'm gonna give that due date of today. And then if I wanted to, I could give it a recur interval. And there's some new logic in here that actually improves on the recurring tasks template I made in a previous video. If I give it a recurring interval, it is automatically going to be given the type of recurring and we'll see that next due date. Now, the way that I handle recurring tasks in Notion is to set their due date to the next due date. So essentially this next due column is a guide of sorts. So if we go ahead and set that to November 2nd, then the next due date is going to update accordingly. Whereas for one-time tasks, we actually just hit the done button and they disappear. This is a bit of a workaround to deal with some of Notion's limitations. And if you're curious about how it actually works, I have a whole video about recurring tasks in Notion. I'll have that linked in the description down below. But now Next, we have the state column here, which gives you some quick at a glance information about a task. If it's red, it's overdue. If it's green, it is due today. And if it is blue, it is planned for the future. You're also gonna see these little arrow markers here sometimes. These indicate that this task is indeed a subtask of another task. So if I go into this task right here by clicking open, the first property we see here is parent task. And I can click onto this and go into it to reveal that within this task, we have our own little subtasks table. So one quick thing I forgot to mention when I was filming earlier is that you can create subtasks within any task using a template. So if we go to this shoot ultimate video right here, we can spawn from a template called task with subtasks, or we can go over to here to new and click task with subtasks to get ourselves a task that has a little database inside of it. Any task created in this sub database is going to be a subtask 
of this parent task. So this is essentially the best way that I could think of to achieve subtasks inside a notion. And then from any view, the little arrow icon in the state column will let you see at a glance that it is indeed a subtask. And I mean any view, you've got the inbox view here and we've got several different views that you can switch to. So list view is actually perfect for mobile phones because the list view actually is responsive unlike the table view. And here you can see that state information, you can see the inbox checkbox, the due date and the done checkbox for when you're done. We've also got a uh, board view that goes with your typical Kanban states to do, doing and done, which means that not only do you have typical table-based task management, you also have Trello style Kanban management here, which is gonna be very useful for projects later on. And also if you grab a task in the Kanban view and you drag it over to done, you are gonna see it here in the Kanban view because some people wanna see which cards are done, but in any other view, such as the table view, that is now going to be gone because due to our filter criteria here, which essentially runs the entire system, the Kanban state of done is treated exactly like the done checkbox in terms of what tasks are hidden from what views. So that is a brief look at the inbox view here. If we go over to the sidebar, this was really important to me. I wanted to design a system that allowed me to get to my inbox, my today view, my next week view, my priority view, all from the sidebar. It essentially replicates the same functionality from Todoist, which I used to use and I've now switched over from. So if we go over to another view, such as today, we get something that looks basically like the inbox. And if we switch over to the table view, you're gonna see it looks pretty much like it, except the filter is changed. So now we only see tasks that are due today or before today, which means you're only gonna see the red or the green circles. And if you add a task here, which we'll just call task due today, it's automatically going to have a due date of today. Of course, we can also go through and add other information such as our project, a recurrent of all if we want to, a parent task, anything you want. And like I said earlier, from any view today, next seven days, whatever it is, you have your daily tasks blocks. So if you wanted to create a new one for 10, 26, 20, which would be a good scratch pad for today, then we could look at what we've got going on in today view and plan out our day along with anything else that might come up. So today I know I had a call with the movers. I had to film this video. I've got some tweaks on my website. I can easily plan that out here in the today view. Now, to make sure these daily task notes don't gunk up your entire system, there is an archive checkbox, which if clicked will hide the note from basically every view. So I'm not gonna hide this one because this is today, but I do wanna go and hide yesterday's which I'm done with. So we'll just click that. And then from any view here, it is gonna be completely gone. So from there, let's look at the next seven days view. This is identical to the today view, except the filter criteria is a little bit different. Instead of filtering for tasks on or before uh, today, they are now due on or before a week from now which means you're now gonna see everything that was in the today view, but also in these blue rows, you're gonna see anything due after today up to and including seven days from now. So from there, let's go into some more interesting views. First, we have this priority view, which looks a little bit different from all the other ones. I wanted to build Kanban, that Trello style card system into this. So people who like to use that can use that. And people who like to use the table view can use the table view. So here in priority view, every task when created is going to automatically get the medium priority level. And this is done through a filter trick that I use all the time in my Notion workspace. Essentially, if you come in here to your filters and you choose a property like Kanban view state or priority, and you filter the view by is not empty, then whenever you create a new card, and let's go ahead and do it somewhere else because here we're doing it inside this board so it would automatically get medium anyway. Let's do it over in the today view. So if we create another task, let's just call it another task due today. And then if we go into that task, we're going to see that it automatically has the medium priority set. And it's because due to the filter criteria, Notion is going to force this row to take on one of those priorities. And the one that's going to be chosen is the top listed one. So if you wanted every new task to be listed as low instead, you would just drag low to the top. I want every task to come as medium instead of low. So that's the order I want here. And if we go back to our priority view, notice that the order of the Kanban boards does not have to match the order of the items in the select property. I can drag this around all I want. It's not going to affect things. Everything is still gonna come in as a medium priority task, which means we can easily order it by high, medium, and low. So if you're a priority person, this is gonna be the view for you. So from there, let's move into probably the most complex part of the system, but also I think the most powerful. If we go back to the ultimate tasks dashboard, we have a separate database called projects. So this is its own database. And if you create it, we've actually got a template here called a project template. 
you're going to get something that looks kind of like this. This is sort of a demo project I've got in here so you can sort of look at how things are going on. But this has a linked database in it. And of course we are linking to, you guessed it, our all tasks database where everything lives. And while we're here, if you look at this project column, you're going to see some of these tasks have certain projects associated with them in this project column. We achieve that by what's called a relation. We relate one database to another database. In this case, all tasks is related to, if I go back with command bracket, our projects database. And so we're relating to this specific row, which is a project, our website redesign, which means that any new task created in this board, like debug homepage, is going to automatically be associated with this project. I can go ahead and give it a due date if I want to. And if you really wanted to, you could go ahead and give the filters here due date criteria so it would force different due dates. Personally, that doesn't really work for my needs, but of course you can always add things or subtract things. That's the beauty of Notion. And within this uh, project view here, we have our standard table view, which is pretty useful. But when I manage big projects, I love to use Trello style Kanban views. So we can switch to two different Kanban views, one of which is our classic state view, which is our to do, doing and done lists. But for really big projects, I kind of like to use Kanban in a different way. I've got another view called board view tag. And here I've got different tags for different categories of work. So for a website redesign, I've got design tasks. I've got copy that needs to be written for different pages. I've got speed tasks. I've got security tasks. So for this project, I would just create new tasks under these tags so I could sort of see the entire project at a glance. But of course, every single one here that has a due date is also going to show up in my today view. So I've got one place to plan my project and see it all from bird's eye view and other places to see what needs to happen in a given day in that task, but also across my entire system. So let me just demonstrate really quickly how you would create a new project. If we come back to the ultimate tasks dashboard here and look at the projects database. If we click new, we're going to add a new blank row. And if we click right here, we can generate a new template based on the templates we have set up. So if I click this, it's going to auto fill with all the different stuff we set up in the template. So I will call this a uh, house move. We've got a whole project moving to a new house very, very soon. I'm gonna want to have everything related to that in one project. So now if I create another task here, like pack books, and I make that do uh, today, why not? Then it's gonna be here but it's also going to be in my today view, pack books. And we can see it's associated with the house move. Now, personally, I don't wanna have a frog icon on all my projects. So one thing I'm probably gonna to do to customize this project is change its icon. Let's just go with a house. Boom, and now if I come back to today, it is visually distinct from our website redesign project. So I know there's a lot going on in this template. If you have questions about it, feel free to ask them in the comments down below. And like I said earlier, you're gonna find this template, number one, linked in the description where you can get to the landing page for it, or you can find all my Notion templates over at thomasjfrank.com slash templates. And on the template landing page, there is a little email sign up. If you want to get on my Notion Tips email list where you're gonna get notified about new templates I create and new content that I create to teaching Notion, uh, you can sign up right there on any of those pages, or you can just click the no thanks button and go right to the template without signing up for your email. Either one is cool with me. Again, ask questions uh, both about this, but really anything else. This channel right now is kind of focused on Notion. So I want to hear your questions. I want to hear what you want to know about. And uh, let me know what you think of this template. Let me know if there's anything you would do to improve it. And if you're curious, last but not least, I am building a course for people who wanna use Notion as their all-in-one productivity system, specifically for creating content, running businesses, and running teams. This will be useful for both solopreneurs who have a lot going on, but also people who have teams and people working under them. And in that course, you're gonna see an even more advanced version of this template that's also hooked into a company wiki with standard operating procedures that you can use to generate checklists and a whole content library and lots of other cool stuff. So I'll have a link to to sign up for the interest list for that course. It's not ready yet, but I am building it as we speak and it's gonna be ready at least in a beta form pretty soon. So if you're interested, you can sign up for notifications on that. And that's all I got for you today. So I'll have a couple of other videos on the screen that you can check out. Make sure you're subscribed to this channel if you aren't already. And uh, as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.